My name is Ian, I'm a producer for Texas Cigar Roadshow. And I'm David, I'm a Texan, and I love cigars. This is Pit Stop. Welcome back to Texas Cigar Roadshow Pit Stop. We're so glad you could join us here at Tobacco Cabana in Cedar Hill. We've got Rhonda, Stephen, David, and Bob got all here Everybody tonight. here today, man. Thank you as always for having us out and for showing us some of the finest hospitality in Texas. David, we've got a special guest today. We do, we do, very special guest. Uh, Mr. Dan Thompson, VP of Sales at McAuliffe Cigars. Mr. Without further ado. Yes, come on in, man, come on in. Hey we'll guys, you, how are you doing? I am good. I'm good. It's good to oh, be here. Always good to see you. We're gonna give you the center seat, oh. and I'm gonna sit here so so we can talk. Fantastic. But yeah, how are you, Ben? I mean, last time I seen you was at our on our uh, video that we did for McCallum. We are incredibly grateful for that video that you built for us. Man, you know it's exciting. Every new ambassador that joins McCallum Cigars. In their welcome mail, it says, watch Texas Cigar Roadshow. Awesome. Wow. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So your content that you built with us and helping us tell our story, we are incredibly grateful. Fantastic. That is, thank you very much. We're, we were thrilled to do it. And it's actually, it's fitting that you're here today. We're, we're celebrating a special event. Special. Uh, number um, one cigar brand on CigarScore.com with the number one <laughs> cigars lounge Tobacco Cabana. Tobacco Cabana on the number one cigar show. That's right. I mean, it's like a trifecta. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. So we thought we're going to get uh, maybe a uh, McAuliffe rep to come out, and uh, we, we had no idea we'd get uh, the man himself, Dan Thompson. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, you actually, you brought some... Uh... We decided to break the rules a little. We're going to smoke the McAuliffe A mm. that's going to re-release in about a week. Whoa! And we had them in in our humidors that mm. we toured through. Yes. Yeah. I've, yeah, yes. I've, I've been hiding them from everybody. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that tour quite a bit, uh, and uh, definitely wanted to stay in there as long as possible. But <laughs> it was it was. I mean that that um, that episode was just beyond. I mean, I, you you heard me during the video saying I'm I'm just yeah. stammering on my words. That was incredible. It was it is incredible. It, but let me let me do something first, Dan. Let's right. let's pour a drink. We're gonna start something new. We're gonna start something new. We're gonna get each other a glass. All right. And, and we we will definitely want to have a good drink. A little celebration. With, All the little, viewers, if you have uh, if you have a beverage close by, doesn't matter if it's coffee, coffee, water, water Kool Aid. Get your glass. Get your drink ready. We're gonna pour up here. We're gonna we're gonna do a little celebration here. So there. You said you've I had think I've got to come over here more often. I like <laughs> celebrating. Yeah. So we're going to get Mr. Ian a little bit, myself. Now, y'all have never had this, right? No, no. We correct. Haven't. This is the... Oh, uh, this is going to be a from, special treat. It's from yeah. TX, uh, from Firestone Distillery in Fort Worth. I love it's, uh, their TX stuff. bourbon finished in a port cask. We uh, we had the sherry cask uh, on a previous episode Previous episode, right. yeah. yeah definitely. love that. But what we want to do right now is we want to celebrate with our viewers and you and have a Texas toast. Absolutely. So, cheers. 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 And cheers to you guys. Thank you, right. McAuliffe Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's see. Oh, wow. That's that delicious. That is really good. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Wow. Uh, do you mind if we uh, can light we, up these can we, can uh, beautiful we light these cigars up? you brought? I say cut and light. <laughs> <laughs> cut and light. That's a, that's a good phrase, you know. I'm a, uh, that you know all those types of phrases when people say get it get it underway gentlemen start your engines whatever we've got that phrase cut and light cut and light you know get after it that's right yeah I like that so Ian took his I knew Ian wanted a a, a V cut so <laughs> I've got his V cut he still gets on to me for not V cutting I I mean, I'm with you Ian it's my preference oh last time <laughs> we talked about this it was a tie it, there was it was all it was tied so we have a tiebreaker. Well, now this is a different day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to claim victory. Yes. Hmm. I haven't had one of these. I've had one, uh, but I haven't had one in a while. So. I hope you guys love it as much as we do. Oh, no. Uh, the A, the Migdalia, and just the other day, Leanda number two. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if it was just sitting just right or what, but tasting flavors in that one that I hadn't tasted in it. And so many other ones. Steven, you have one over there? He has a Leanda number two over there. Get a spot on that. Can you see that? It's in its own little coffin. 
I love that that part of it. Uh, the workmanship that you guys put into your cigars is um, is it's top notch. Yeah. Every 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 McAuliffe cigar that I've smoked, it's the the construction is just so rock solid. Uh, and I, I remember you talking about that yeah. in the last. Uh, we did. We talked about the construction. You know, it's a uh, great partnership that we have with the Gomez Sanchez family. And, you know, they've, they've been blending and building cigars for almost 75 years. My math may be off just a little. Oh. But what, what made it special is since we come from manufacturing, working together as a team and helping them with the supply chain of the tobacco and being able to all bring it to market, they play their position, we play our position. We couldn't be happier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, just like we talked about in the video with uh, with Al, how how they were kind of struggling a little bit and came along, and but yet what they were doing was great. Their product was great. great. They just didn't have the resources right. after leaving Cuba to ever get that kickstart. You know, yeah. They have a relationship with like the Padron family and some other people that were able to scale it up. Oh wow! In their yeah. family, they just had a couple challenges that never allowed that to happen. Yeah. But the quality of what they do. I mean, yeah, we every, love it. Every, I was just talking uh, with somebody else about the cigars, is that not only are the cigar themselves, just the taste that I get out of the cigars great, but in, like Ian said, the construction, the draw that I've had on every one of them. I have not had a problem with a McAuliffe cigar yeah, yet. You, yeah, even if... I, I, I like all the blends too, but even if you didn't like the blend, they're, they're, you can't say anything bad about the, the draw and construction, the, the quality control. You, yeah. guys, you guys are part of the McAuliffe Ambassador community. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you know, I talk or DM with ambassadors every day, mm -hmm. and I love that conversation. And I've got to be honest, I don't hear about construction problems very often. Yeah. I mean, the, I think there's two categories. Sometimes, on a rare, rare occasion, there is a cigar that has a construction problem. And the other problem that we get is if they weren't taken care of as they went to retailers and finally reached them to end customers, sometimes that's a problem. Right. But on the whole, we've, we've been incredibly fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. But you said, I remember we, I remember you giving us an example. I don't know if it made, I, I think, I don't know if it made the episode, but you, you did talk about, uh, it was like a collector's case that you were The collector's case out. is where we get problems. You're exactly and, right. But, but you were, you were right on top of it, correcting the problem. That's right. Uh, so when there are, there's there's not going to be a process that's ever perfect. Yeah. But uh, it's, right. it seems but, like it's very important to McAuliffe to but stay But like on, we've pointed out plenty of times, of when a when a when a when an owner of a company, and, and I'm always going to talk about cigars like this, is when they see a problem and they know that it's affecting their customers, and then they say we're going to fix that now because yeah. of X, Y, or Z, and they. They turn it around and boom. Over Christmas, a son bought his father one of those packages that we talked about. Uh -huh. The clear case, we call them a pro pack. And the father sent in his pictures of the damaged cigars that were mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And boom, we yeah. had him before New Year's. We had some replacements out. And since it's, it's this boy that bought them, yeah. we, we put in some other goodies for him so that they could have the Christmas nice. they deserve. Nice, nice. That's, nice. Almost, that's almost better than uh, <laughs> than getting a perfect oh. box. <laughs> when you have that interaction with the company and you can see them. Yeah. But that makes me, that that things like that are what make me enjoy or appreciate oh, a brand yeah. Yeah. even Thank more. You. Yeah. Thank you. Even yes. more. And so, so fitting that you guys got number one cigar brand. Well, thank you very I mean, much. There's, there was a lot of them out there, but and, and just mention, and we Texas killed it. Texas, I'm saying Texas is rocking cigars. It's crazy that we no can all be here. sitting here. We had the number one cigar brand. We had the number one uh, storytelling video media, yeah. which is you guys, and here at uh, Tobacco Cabana. Yeah, that's you know, unheard of. Yeah, yeah. Texas loves cigars. And then a AME <laughs> was close behind. So another AME Texas shot. AME was close behind. I mean, there were there were several, and I loved watching the video when they announced it. Yeah, I think he was surprised how strong the Texas yeah, vote came yeah, out. He, yeah, he said Texas showed up. <laughs> Texas showed up. Yeah, so that that was fantastic uh, to be able to watch that and had no idea. I mean, we 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 knew we knew we had uh, people voting for us and stuff, but I mean, there was some some great brands there and great, great lounges brands. and yes. great shows out there. <laughs> yeah, I when when we made the. The, the, when Texas Cigar Rocha made the top ten, I, I was uh, I was pretty thrilled about that, and I, I didn't I didn't think that Texas Cigar Rocha was going to win. Yeah. I, 
I, I believe in you guys, though. You, you craft a great product. You're great storytellers. And as people get exposure to what you're doing, I know that it's yeah. going to blow up in a positive way for you. Appreciate. Yeah. We, we love what you're doing. We, we love what we're doing. And that, that's, <laughs> we love what we're doing. You know, and it's fun. I mean, the cigar community, uh, being able to meet people like yourself and and be able to talk <laughs> behind the scenes. Sure. Uh, and find out more, and and then our viewers are able to participate somewhat in that by that's right vicariously coming through and watching us. Okay, I've got I've got some inside information oh, about oh, Macau cigars. Stand by. Exclusive. The blends are out on the market, yeah. but it's funny when a blend kind of like all of a sudden hits its prime and it's unexpected, you know, and the cigars go from really great to, why is this cigar smoking so good right now? Mm -hmm. And we've got two in that category that I didn't regularly smoke, but now I, I'm smoking like chimneys. <laughs> That's the Sumatra, yes. which I know you guys love. Yeah, yes. I do. And then the next one's gonna just <laughs> surprise you. The Riata. I don't know if you've even had a Riata. I know it's in I my passport. I have had one, but it's in my passport. I, I like the Riata. It's not my favorite. Uh huh. <laughs> but the Riatas are smoking unbelievable right now. Wow. I don't know why, but you know, as tobacco, as time to age, they really hit a, a sweet point. And we're seeing that in those two cigars right now. Yeah. Do you remember what's in the Riata? I, I don't have the blend information sure. off the top of my head. I wonder if it has something to do with, uh, do you think it has something to do with the, the, the time of year that we're in? The Riatas that are available right now have been in our Steven. humidor for four years. Steven, oh, you've got the our, card. Our prop here, <laughs> we forgot our prop hand here. I, I the, can we show this. the camera? Yeah, what, I want to show what this. What Steven just brought. <laughs> this, is, this is how we survived talking about our cigars as we were really getting our shows down yeah. to be able to do it. And what it is, is it looks across the blends, it's uh, its a little out of date now, like the A's not on here, mm -hmm. but it shows the strength, the construction, the size. Kind of the of same kind of, the cigars. Of, kind of thing that uh, Tobacco Cabana does here on their cigars. You know, that was so cool. They walked me through how they set the facings here at to, uh, Tobacco Cabana yeah. and showing that the strength that goes with them and being in alphabetical order so you can easily find things. I just haven't seen a shop organized in kind of this systematic, fun, easy to use way. Mm, yeah. It's really cool. And that's what we were trying to reproduce on this. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so where's Ian, the I'm, gonna on this? I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna let you read with me. Um, here's the Riata. And we, you know, I think the Riata is overlooked right now because it comes in a Churchill and a torpedo. We don't okay. have a Toro for it now, which would be the, the primary choice that people would take. Yeah. And so sometimes it's overlooked. And so you can see that it's got the San Andreas wrapper, mm -hmm. and then it's got the Ecuadorian binder, okay. and then the filler is Nicaraguan from three different regions. So it's providing that complexity. Yeah, yeah. It's not, an, uh, it's, a, it's a true medium cigar. It is not a heavy cigar at all. So when you're palate and you're looking for like kind of just really interesting flavors, mm -hmm. and right now it's smoking like crazy. Wow, wow. It and the Sumatra are just. I love Sumatra. It right I do. Now. I, I love the. Yeah, I right. think I had. We yeah. had the Sumatra not too long ago. On yeah, one of our yeah. episodes. I, I do love the Sumatra. Just the sweetness of a Sumatra. Little, just you know, just a touch in there that that adds a little bit to it. That's different from so many of the other ones. I I love Nicaragua, uh, the the pepper, the the strength that you get from the Nicaraguan tobacco, um, and so that those are all blended in. I'm gonna have to go back and re revisit that Riata because uh, I've already smoked it. Yeah, one. you know, and we talked about it. At Macau Cigars, you know, Habano and Sumatra are real, carry a lot of weight in our cigars. Mm. We use them in a lot of different combinations. If you say, what are your two primary tobaccos? It's yeah. Sumatra and Habano. Oh, okay. okay. And so we work with it a lot of different ways. And that's why our Sumatras taste great. Well, they have, uh, yeah. I remember you talking. You, mm, that's uh, pairing. That's pairing. I'm sorry. That's, that's pairing pretty pretty good, pretty good with I, this. I'll be honest. I don't know what brand doesn't pair well with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, it is yeah, great. Or vice versa. You know what? What drink won't pair pair with the this uh, this? Well, that's uh, cigar. true too. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's a good cigar. It's a good drink. Put them together. Uh, that's the way I look at things. But when you do get something that really matches up pretty well, and you get some flavors accented. In such a way, I I, I can't really figure out what it is. But I sit back and you know when I notice something, I'll just sit back and go, mm, okay, that's different. I like that. So uh, 
this, it, I just, it, it just hit me. I had to, <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's a lot of fun. We have uh, our sales team that Andy's built this last year. Mm -hmm. We have some guys who were sommeliers in their previous career history. So you're gonna start seeing us talking a lot more about pairings. Okay. Moving from coffees to whiskeys and rums. And uh, the other area that we'd do the pairing would be, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Tequila. <laughs> Tequila was not on the list. Is it is it beverage or is it like uh, like chocolate or food pairings? That's right. Okay, I was food thinking pairings. about okay, it. Gotcha, yeah. So we're gonna start, you know, working with the ambassadors because they always show us their pairings. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, they, and you know, Tim Roush gets like the greatest whiskey selection in the world. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he's way up north from us. But we're learning a lot, and so we're gonna start talking about those pairings more often so we can try them together. Yep. So be looking, and I'm sure that this has got to be at nice. the top of the list. Well, we'll have to make a, 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 a note to watch those, or you got to post those out on the Facebook uh, That's what we're going to do. That's exactly. So that other people can try to duplicate that. Now, are yeah. those uh, ambassador exclusives? Yeah, you know, it's or a really are they good question. Public? No, you're, you're going to see, that's the kind of content that we have when you're inside the McAuliffe Ambassador Group. So join the ambassador program. So join the ambassador program. It's a, it's a really... It's a great community. I like it because, you know, some places in cigar world may be a little racier or things like that. This is really a wholesome group of people that mm -hmm. are, every ambassador is just, they're the nicest men and women that I've met. Yeah. And, and we like having the community that's yeah. wholesome and fun. Right. So right. my mom can join is what you're saying. I don't have to worry about. We, we <laughs> yes, she can join. There's other places that may be like exciting for other reasons, but at McAuliffe, we want it to be a family venture so that we can have fun together. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, I mean, and, and that showed through every aspect of, of when we were with you at the, the you. headquarters there. Just from the way the building looks, the the interiors, just uh, the way the you guys think about your customers first, your, your which are your brick and mortars. That's right. That's your customers. Brick and mortar exclusives. Yeah, and, and that was and that, just- You hadn't announced that at the time we filmed the episode. That's man, a recent Man, I don't remember. Last year just flashed by so fast. So let, can we talk about that real sure. quick? So. Uh, let me brag on McAuliffe. <laughs> yeah. This was, I mean, it was so, I feel like it's unheard of. I certainly can't think of anyone else who's done this. Uh, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding was that you guys had had your inventory in some online retailers. Correct. Um, and, you know, we don't want to disparage online retailers too much, but we're, but our show, <laughs> yeah. we, 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 we love the brick and mortar. That's the whole reason we started our show. And you guys love brick and mortars, but talk about putting your money where your mouth is. So we started last year and we did an open letter and it was kind of cryptic, but basically it meant we were gonna become a brick and mortar exclusive brand. And our, our heart really drove us to this decision mm. because we're a family owned business and we want to work with people who are family owned businesses. Right. On the business side, they can make decisions fast, but in the cigar community, they're the backbone of the industry. Yeah. We, don't we don't have brick and mortars in place. We don't have anywhere to smoke. Yeah. You know, your, yeah. your online relationship only goes so far. Right, yeah. So we found ourselves in a weird position where we were, can I say who? It's okay with y'all, I don't mind. I've already infuriated them. <laughs> we drop, had, drop names, drop them. We, we, we had this situation where Cigar International was supposed to be a partner of ours to help do some promotion and introduce cigars. And we found that that relationship just wasn't healthy. It was like having a bad girlfriend or something like that. And so toxic relationship, maybe? toxic. We didn't have the right boundaries. So <laughs> there, was, there wasn't any chemistry there. We decided that it would be fun to publicly break up. <laughs> wow. And we wanted to do that so that the other brick and mortars knew what we were doing. We didn't want anybody yeah. to be confused. Yeah. It wasn't they fired us. No, we fired them. Yeah. And this is like from a, a scene from the show Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, but it, and but y'all's dedication to the brick and mortars couldn't have come across at a better time, was, which was an inopportune time for the brick and mortars because of COVID. That's right. But yet you guys said, we're gonna take care of you and you're drop shipping. Yeah, with Ultimate Inventory yeah. and some of the other programs, you know, we want we want retailers to be able to say yes anytime somebody comes in and asks for a Macau product. Yep. Yeah. So we were drop shipping. There were parts of the country where they were closed. Yeah. All they had was drop shipping phone. is when is when you kind of uh, 
you become the brick and mortar in the sense. You send you send the cigars to the customers. I would describe it subtly different. You know, the case, the, the, the usage case, which really made us move fast, is we had friends who owned brick and mortars, especially in the north and in the east. And as they shut down all those for the COVID and the pandemic, mm -hmm. we had friends who like were having to sit at home and they were just calling their customers trying to sell anything. Yeah. And so the solution that we provided them was they could call their customers and the, they would make the sell. So it's, it's actually sold to the retailer. Mm -hmm. And we would use our distribution center, which we were all in together. Glorious and place, we would ship place. it directly <laughs> to their customers. Yeah. And that way, if they couldn't unlock their shop because of the regulations that were around them, yeah. they could still sell yeah. cigars. And from the customer standpoint, it's no different than just ordering from the mom and pop Yeah, you shop. just order from your favorite brick and mortar, and you know, two, three days later, the yeah. boxes show up. Yeah, right. that's that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, that I mean, that's just, that's putting everybody else first in, in making sure that their survival. Well, it shows you're invested in the cigar culture yeah. long term. Right. We're not, we're not only invested in it, but it makes good bu business sense for both parties. Yeah. We had cigars in our inventory. If we can't sell those, that's a problem. Right. Yeah. So if the retailer could sell it while they weren't able to operate their shop, yeah. and we could just ship it, and then we'll settle up on the back end. It's no big deal. Right. Sure, but it also seems like it's uh, advantageous for a company to partner with a huge online retailer. There, there, that had to have come with, that's a risky decision. Like that's a, that's a gutsy decision to make, and it takes a lot, I, from my standpoint, I don't know, but it seems like it takes a lot of courage to make that call. We always talk honestly with our ambassadors. And when you walk away from a book of business like Cigar International, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a big book of business that we were doing with I them. can only imagine. <laughs> but, but we knew that it was gonna be the brick and mortars and the ambassador community, because we listened to them. They like their brick and mortar. We like the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. wow. So sometimes you just say, hey, we're not gonna be lukewarm. We're wow. not gonna try to like finesse it. Let's just go all in and do it together. Yeah, that's so that's so what cool. we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tobacco Cabana. Like, yeah, yeah. like where tobacco we are right cabana. now in Tobacco exactly. Cabana. Yeah, <laughs> Tobacco Cabana carries, and like I think I heard you in conversation with Stephen. You know, the, I know they've got this, so they've had McAuliffe in here. I, I'm going to go look up their number when I get back to the office tomorrow. But they're probably in the first 50 accounts that we ever open. Right. And it's brick and mortars like Tobacco Cabana that we want to see them succeed. Yep. Yeah. You know, and they've seen us grow. We've made missteps, mm -hmm. but, but I think that now the momentum and the trust and confidence we're building with each other makes McAuliffe an, an exciting brand to have in their shops. Yeah. Yeah. Are and there any... Uh, I was going there too. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we're about there. Got a little uh, ESP going on. Are there any uh, future cigars that you can talk about? Okay. <laughs> We released a note in the ambassador community that was our game plan for the year. Uh -huh. We're actually, we wanted them all to see it, so if they had feedback they wanted to provide. And what we announced to them in a very honest way is that we're gonna have a cigar in March, uh -huh. and we're gonna have a cigar in September. Mm. The reason that they're in March and September is that is not when the trade show's happening, when every other brand is pushing their stuff. Okay. We want the brick and mortars to have something new to have conversations with, mm. with the ambassadors and the other consumers. Now, I'm not gonna talk about what those two cigars oh. are. Oh! <laughs> because there's gonna be just, a just big- Just have to wait, just have to wait. Yeah, yeah, drink up. <laughs> drink up, drink up. <laughs> 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 yeah, pour him another uh, I, I will say this, they're two very different cigars. Right. What's right. gonna happen in March and what's gonna happen in September, they are very different from wow. each other. So it's uh, McAuliffe's first flavored cigar candy <laughs> no, no, flavor. No, 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 no. Now you're gonna get me in trouble with the FDA. We're not gonna do that. No. They'll be very traditional cigars, but they will appeal to two mm. totally different groups of smokers. Yeah, wow. it's I mean, very possible. And that's what's great when you've got a line like yours. That I mean, these, your, your. You're inexpensive. I, I don't. I don't like to use the word but, any cheap. You know, but because they're not. Oh, they're value well, cigars. They're values. They're Rob right. from value. Cigar Talk. Right. They say a uh, foe to forty-two. Foe yeah. to forty-two. Exactly. <laughs> so, so you've got this, but still a, a, a fantastic cigar all the way to the forty-dollar. Yeah, we we have the entire range so that people can smoke them every day. Mm -hmm. If that's if they're everyday smokers, every blend. You know, if if you enjoy smoking cigars. 
you're going to find two or three blends you'll love. Yeah, yeah. And the, you'll, you'll Migdalia, like the, the Migdalia Corona is. I <laughs> think. <laughs> 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 The That's right. door? Yeah, yeah absolutely. ongoing feud between uh, the yeah. the Toro and the and, and the uh, and the Corona. And the Cor yeah, I know I, uh, Sam and I are right there on the Corona. <laughs> I know you're a you're a Toro guy. Well, I've, I've used these words with my wife before, and it never works well. I believe that you believe that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. it never you're entitled works well. to your opinion, even yeah. if it's wrong. Well, man. Man, fantastic. Well, Dan, thank you so much for joining us. This was such a treat. Man. It's a blast being over here, getting to celebrate with three winners representing three different parts of the yeah. cigar industry. So thank you to Baco Cabana for hosting us. Yeah. And you guys at Texas Cigar Roadshow, thank you for all the work you're doing. We uh, love it. Yeah. And we just want to support you however we can. Yeah. A lot of love going around. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, enjoy the leaf. Grow the culture. Texas Cigar Roadshow is presented by the North Texas Cigar Society.